Just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital, the sponsor of this week's video. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another vlog. Um, today, I've come out to um, an area of the Blue Mountains, which would you believe I've never been to. I've never been to this location. I've never photographed this location. And this location is not far away from um, the Cathedral of Ferns, which I placed a couple of videos up on this channel a couple of weeks ago. And um, I knew this place existed, but I just haven't had a chance to get here. Um, the Blue Mountains is such a large area that uh, you just can't photograph it in one lifetime. So I haven't been here, so it'll be a new adventure not only for me, but also for you guys out there watching this video today. Um, I've done a lot of research on this area and it's called, it's actually called the Mount Irvine Waterfall Walk. I think that's what it's called, but in, yes, there's waterfalls in it, but we haven't had much rain here in the last week or so. We've had a few showers, but nothing to really get the waterfalls running here. But um, if there's water in the waterfall, that's just uh, icing on the cake for me today. But I'm more in, uh, interested in the rainforest environment here. And uh, upon doing all that research on this area, it looks like it's absolutely gorgeous with um, the ferns and the, the palm trees and it is a mini rainforest here, tempered rainforest and as I said it's new to me here so what I'll do I'll, uh, I'll grab the gear and I'll make my way down into the forest floor uh, once I get there I'll explain to you uh, what I'm doing looking for composition but it's also too there's a few things I want to speak to you about and one of those things is hyperfocal distance and the easiest way to do it. So that's coming up in this video, so I'll grab the gear and I'll see you down there at the forest floor. Well, I'm not quite down the bottom of the valley floor here yet, but as you can see, this is the territory that I'm in. And it is, it is thick. Beautiful ferns, you've got all this here. I won't be photographing this, Though I could, um, but I want to get down to the floor itself. But as you can see, this is where I am. It is, that's the path. So I'm working my way through it all. But this is just an incredible place. And I'm so glad I've come out here this morning. We're a few days away from Easter, so I presume at Easter time this will be probably busy, but I don't know whether many people visit this area because it's not really, the tracks aren't worn. That track there is where I've just come down, but this is close combat stuff, this. But there's some really good composition here, I know, I can feel it. So I'll, make, I'll keep making my way down and I'll turn the video camera back on once I get down to the valley floor. Okay, I found um, my first composition here and I'll turn the camera around and show you. I'm, I'm still actually on the, on the trail. I'm not actually in the actual forest itself or the actual vegetation. And that's something you've got to be very careful of. If you can stay to the trail, just stay to the trails because this is a very um, unique area and it's, it's very, very fragile. But I've got these two magnificent palms in front of me and I've got this palm in front here, which I'll just turn the camera around because I want to show you, I want to talk to you about hyperfocal distance um, focusing and the easiest way to do it. A lot of people seem to complicate things. Um, sure, you can focus stack, but sometimes focus stacking doesn't work and sometimes it doesn't work in certain situations. But hyperfocal distance um, focusing works. Now, I'll just turn this camera around and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now... As you can see, there's the camera there. I've got these, this fern right here. It's about a meter from the front of the camera. Then at the back, we have the large fern here, fern there, fern there. I'm shooting at 16 millimeter. Now, how the hyperfocal distance works with photography is you find the closest object to your lens. Now, in this case, there's the lens, there's the fern. That is a metre, okay? So we're not focusing on the fern. What you do, if you can roughly work out how far or the distance between the front of the lens, not the back of the lens, the front of the lens to the fern, 
which is in this case is about a metre. So you double it, so it's two metres. So two metres is that fern there. That's where you focus, that's where I focus. Now I've just taken the shot and you'll, I'll put it up on the screen in a moment, but that means that everything is in focus. It's nice and sharp. It's pin sharp actually. There's no movement here. Um, my shutter speed was around about 15 seconds here and I'm shooting still at ISO 100. So, um, but the hyperfocal distance works by doubling the distance from the closest thing to the front of the lens. And in this case, it's this fern a metre away times it by one, that's two metres, which goes to the fern there. Beautiful. That is how the hyperfocal distance works. You find the closest object to your lens and then you double it. 99.9% .9 of the time, it works. So that's how hyperfocal distance works with your photography. It's a much simpler way of doing it. Um, sure, you can focus stack, but that means more work. I mean, yeah, sometimes I focus stack as well, but I find that if I can, if there's nothing moving or, and I'm fairly close to my um, scene, which I am here, um, as this is very close combat here, um, you, you just use the hyperfocal distance scale. Find something that's close to your lens. If you can walk it out or measure it out, I know that this is a meter. And this only comes with experience. You will eventually get this. You will know exactly how far an object is from the front of the lens. And then you double it. So we've got a metre here, two metres, set fern there, perfect shot. Okay, you might have remembered the analogy I use in the last couple of videos with these rainforest environments is that it's mother's nature's, mother nature's untidy garage sale. Well, if you want to see a, a, a Mother Nature's Untidy Garage Sale, you have to come here and I'll put the link to this place at the bottom of this video. But I've just come across this really nice composition and um, just got this natural path through here, which I'm using as a leading line leading to a really nice fern. So I'll just turn the camera and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing with this composition. And this is what I mean to say. This is what I'm trying to convey to you all out there, that when you come into an environment like this, there's so much to photograph that you can just get blown away and you'll you won't really get the images you, you, you want because you're so mesmerised But how beautiful uh, nature is. And these rainforests are just absolutely spectacular. I said, I've never been here. I mean, and I'm the only one here. I mean, I can't see anybody else. I hear anybody else. Only the birds and the live birds and everything else. There's a bit of water running over there. But I'll turn this camera around. I've got this little leading path. I've got the camera down low. You'll see what exactly what I'm doing. I'll turn it around and I'll show you exactly why it's important to look for these little elements within all this chaos. So I'll turn it around and I'll just show you. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the camera down low there. It's just about around about my waist level. I'm in portrait orientation. Now, that's the fern there. There's the path. So very simple composition. The path leads to the fern. So when a viewer is looking at this, like you're looking at it now, and you'll see the image in a moment, but your eye is guided through to that fern. And this is, this is what I talk about looking, having a look around. Um, you know, this is just uh, a pristine location with so much to photograph. Seriously, I'll have to come back here. I will not get all of this. Um, but yeah, as I said, I'll put the link to this location at the bottom of this video. But getting back to it, it is an untidy, chaotic scene that Mother Nature provides us with um, rainforest photography. So I'll keep going. And I seem to walk, this place is so good. You walk 100 metres, you've got to set up again. I mean, it is just incredible. But um, yeah, I'll get back to you very shortly. Okay, now, usually um, in this environment, you're shooting anywhere from around f8 to probably f11, could be up to f16. But what about if you shot at f4 or 2.8? Um, that um, would certainly make for a very interesting image where you're just focusing on that one element. 
and you've got that nice bokeh with the background. Now, this lens I'm using is a 16 to 35, it's an f4 lens, so at f4, um, it will sh it should give me a nice balance um, with a bit of softness in the background behind this fern here. And I'll turn this camera around and show you in a moment. I'll take it at f f11 and then I'll do it at f4 and I'll put those uh, both these images up so you can have a look at them and see what I'm talking about. But um, I'll see if I can darken the back of the camera and I'll show you um, exactly uh, what I've got planned here and I'll just, if you can see that now. So that's the composition there. That's the fern. So that will be at F11 and then I'll do it at F4. Just to, you know, make it a bit more interesting. Um, just to, different perspective, different image really. And this is what I'm saying, you've got to find something that's going to challenge you. Um, the way we can improve with anything in life is to find things that challenge us. And with photography, um, I firmly believe if you can find um, challenges within your photography, you will certainly improve. There's no doubt about that. I've been doing this for over four decades, that's over 40 years, and I still be, I still like being challenged with my photography. And when you come into an environment like this, which is just incredible, um, you're going to be challenged for composition or trying to find the right composition in all this chaos and mayhem. Um, but everywhere I look, um, it's just incredible. I mean, you can use a circular polarizer if you want to. I'm not using one here. People suggest you use one, but there's no shine or sheen. There's no wet um, leaf, so there's no shine or reflection to deal with. So, I mean, in post edit, I can, you know, add color, take color out do a few things and just to finish off the images but um, but yeah just think about that find try and find things that will challenge you um, and that way you will improve and um, I posted a video not long ago about not giving up perseverance um, and patience you need patience with this style of photography I can tell you but um, I'll take a few more shots and I'll put them up on the screen and then I'll get back to you towards the end Okay, I found a very interesting composition here. If ever you come here, you will obviously be um, mesmerized. There's no doubt about this. I've never seen, and I've lived here for a very long time, but I've never seen a location as good as this. And that's saying something. Um, the ferns, the fernery, the greenery, the moss, um, the structure of the trees. I don't think I've seen a place in the Blue Mountains that can beat this, and this is just an incredible place and I'm so glad I've been here, come here today. But I found this really nice composition. I'll turn the camera around. I've got the camera down very, very low. Um, I'm only about probably a metre off the ground. And I'll turn the camera around. I'll show you exactly why I'm doing this. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do this one in landscape orientation. You will find that um, with this type of photography, you will be shooting a lot in portrait orientation. So you can keep all the border junk, what I call border junk. And what border junk is, is all that stuff coming in from either side of the frame, from the left or the right. That's what you call border junk. Um, so we don't want that. So sometimes you must be well, nearly all the time shooting in portrait orientation. However, when you've got a bit of a bit, bit of a room like like room like this, uh, you can um, put your camera in landscape orientation. So I'll turn the camera around here and just show you. This will make for a very, very nice image. So I'll turn it around and just show you. <coughs> okay. So as you can see, I've got all these all the fernery here, and I'm down very low as you can see, <clears throat> focusing on the palms there. I'm going to do this at f11. Um, I'm going to focus probably sort of like in the middle um, of this composition just here, and that will give me a um, uh, really nice um, focus all the way through to those back of those palms. And the reason why I'm down low like this is because I've got a bit of sky up here. And I don't want that. So I put the camera down very, very low. I'll take a couple of shots here and I'll put these up on the screen so you can take a look. Well, you might have noticed I'm back in the car and the reason for that is 
you guessed it, rain. Um, typical of the Blue Mountains, the weather can change on you very, very quickly. Um, I was just about, well, I was nearly finished actually, and uh, but I know I'll have to come back here. This is um, an incredible area to photograph. The walk-in's not too bad, a little bit strenuous coming back out. You've got a fairly steep climb out, but it's well worth coming here. Um, as I said, I'll put the uh, link to this uh, this area in the description box below this video. But yeah, look, the weather's now closed in on us here. This area of the Blue Mountains receives more rainfall per year than anywhere else, uh, basically in Sydney or in New South Wales, to be quite honest. It is a very wet, lush environment here, and we're only a couple of days out from Easter, and it's starting to uh, bucket down here now, so I've, um, it just gets too uncomfortable and too slippery, actually. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll finish this video here. I hope there's a few things here that you've learned. Um, I will definitely come back here with the camera, though. There is no doubt about that. It is uh, a superb location. And, uh, yeah, so I, I went through a couple of things with you, hyperfocal distance focusing, um, camera angles, getting the camera down real low to the, close to the ground on your tripod, just for different angles. But really, at the end of the day, you to become good at photography, you it's got nothing to do with how much your equipment costs you or how good or new or how modern the camera or lens um, is. Sure, that helps. It does help, especially with good quality glass, in other words, the lenses. But if you haven't really got it behind the camera, you're going to struggle. It's as simple as that. The bottom line is, go out with your camera, make mistakes, because that's how you learn. Um, but find something that's going to challenge you. Get into an environment like I was here early this morning, and it's a challenge. And you've got to conquer that challenge. And when you do, you will appreciate um, yourself. You'll appreciate you yourself for getting out there and having a go and finding a challenging environment to, to shoot. And rainforest photography is a challenging uh, genre of uh, landscape photography. So I suggest if you're near a rainforest or you can get near one, or come up here to the Blue Mountains if you're in the Sydney Basin area, um, I'm only too glad to take you out into some of these locations and show you. Uh, you can certainly get in contact with me through this channel. There's no problem there. But uh, other than that, that's it for another episode of Sniper Photography. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It'll be up in the next few days. So until then, my name's Glenn Samuel. We've been, you've been watching Sniper Photography. And as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends. But most of all, you keep shooting. Keep smiling. Bye for now.